Time now to talk politics. I am joined by Talk Business and Politics contributor John Burris, State Senator Joyce Elliott. We have a few things to talk about. Mm -hmm. But like the last 24 hours, 36 hours has been just kind of wild and crazy in presidential politics. Let's begin with the big controversy that erupted on Friday afternoon, uh, early evening with Donald Trump and this video that was revealed. It has got a full of vulgar language, but it has set off a firestorm of folks mm -hmm. who are distancing themselves from Donald Trump, particularly GOP elected officials. Is this the beginning of a civil war in the GOP, John? Not a civil war, but definitely you would think the beginning of uh, the hardest chapters of Donald Trump's uh, presidential campaign, which is hard to say. Last week, most pundits like us declared it the worst week of a presidential campaign they ever have seen, and then uh, as he out-Trumped Trump, I guess. <laughs> he, uh, you know, this coming week seems like it's gonna be even worse, and he deserves it. I mean, he's a terrible candidate, and he has been from the beginning. Uh, a lot of Republicans have been very outspoken in that, but um, you know, here with Representative Nate Bell, former House Speaker Davey Carter, Representative David Meeks, a few of the ones that come to mind who've been pretty outspoken. House Speaker Jeremy Gillum came uh, out. The Speaker nice. Gillum came out over the weekend right. and, and, and was one of the first. So it, it seems like this is a final blow that, that Trump won't recover from, but I, I, I don't, I've never, I'm not surprised at all. Senator Elliott, I'll give you a chance to contradict what John Burns <laughs> just said, although I think yeah. you're going to agree with some of it. I do. I start with agreeing with his very last uh, comment. I, I'm not surprised at all. What does surprise me to some extent is the length of time it's taken for people to decide to speak up about Donald Trump, because most of us have been living through just a litany of insults to all kinds of groups of people. And I do find it fascinating that it took this particular incident for people to finally glum on to this man has a DNA of behavior that is just indisputably uh, something that we should not we should not even entertain as conduct that's okay for a president. You know, we can go back to when he was talking about, you know, black people who live in hell or uh, we and, and what he said about Mexicans, what he said about uh, the uh, Central Park Five. And the list just goes on and on and on. And these were things to me that were concerning enough that people that I thought should have spoken up and said there's something really wrong with the behavior of this man that should make us question more than we have. Even with the condemnation that we've seen from Arkansas's elected officials, particularly the governor, some of the congressional federal officials here, I mean, John mm -hmm. Bozeman said something like, I would like to knock his teeth out if he yes. said something like that. They still support. Donald Trump for president. What, what's the justification for that, John? I think it's it's easy and it doesn't make you a hypocrite because you can still think that uh, someone's a bad person but but would be a better commander in chief and do more for the country than, than the alternative. Lyndon Johnson was a terrible person. Read any book about him. He was one of the worst human beings to probably ever, that any of us would have ever encountered, but most Democrats think he was a great president. I'd say there's two hypocrites and two types of hypocrites though. There's Republicans who are defending Trump today, uh, who attacked Bill Clinton throughout the 90s. I think they're hypocritical and it's fair to call them that. But I also think Democrats that defended Bill Clinton and are somehow outraged at Trump are equally hypocritical because you can't say Trump is unfit to be president but have defended Bill Clinton because they're really, their actions really aren't that far apart. I mean, Bill Clinton, he was a little bit smoother. He was a little bit better at lying about it. Right. But their actions, they, they have the same mindset. And so it's hard for me to understand Democrats who are outraged at Trump and call him unfit, but defended Bill Clinton. But I think both are hypocritical. We've got to take a quick commercial break. I'm going to let you respond to that when we All come right. back from this word Very from good. our sponsors. This is Talk Business and Politics. We're back right after this. And welcome back to Talk Business and Politics. I am joined by John Burris and Senator Joyce Elliott. We're talking about the latest in the presidential race, which has just been a whirlwind and a wildfire this weekend. All right, before the break, uh, John Burris was talking about two different types of hypocrites, people that were defending Bill Clinton, people that are outraged at Donald Trump. Senator Elliott, I'll give you a chance to respond. Well, the problem with that line of thinking is John is assuming an equivalency, something that I have seen a lot of Republicans do. Uh, what Trump did was deplorable and what Bill Clinton did was deplorable to use uh, Hillary's word. So there, but one, there's a problem here in that Bill Clinton is not on the ballot. And so there's not even an argument over whether or not those behaviors were something that we should not uh, defend. But so if, if you want to talk about equivalency, you've got to talk about uh, Trump in regard to Hillary. 
And if you're not going to do that, we're just making up stuff, so to speak. Is that fair? Yeah, no, I agree completely that yeah. Bill's problems are not Hillary's. Um, I was speaking more towards you know, reading social media and things over the past, over the weekend, really. You see Democrats talking about how Trump's words make him uh, unqualified to be president. But they're also some of the ones who defended Bill Clinton so, so uh so well, passionately well, yeah. throughout the 90s. And I just think that their actions are very similar. But there's, a, there's an, another big difference. For Trump, you can go back and in the litany of one incident after another, after another, since the time he was 27 years old, when he discriminated against black people in his housing policies. And from that time on, just in New York alone, you, you, you go to what he said about those five young men they were boys at the time. Mm -hmm. Central Park took out a full page ad calling for the reinstatement of the death penalty and that they should be executed. And here are these, these same five young men went to jail from six to 13 years, served time, found innocent even after all of Trump's shenanigans. And then in 2013, they were exonerated and Trump just a few days ago still said yeah. they, are, they are guilty. That is not an equivalency that, that we can find acceptable, I All don't right, think. All right, let's move on just because of time constraints, if nothing else, though, that tonight, mm -hmm. Sunday night, there is going to be uh, the second presidential debate. One of us at this table is going to be there for that. It's not you, John Burris, and it's not me. Is it, is it, it you? It would be I. All right, <laughs> what does Donald Trump have to do tonight to try to turn this thing around, or is it so far in the ditch mm -hmm. that it cannot be turned around? Joyce. Well, if, if I were advising him, God forbid, I would start with a genuine apology. It might be a good idea to apologize to his wife publicly. It might be a good idea to apologize and just say, I was wrong, I did something wrong, and not include other people in his apology. Mm -hmm. So it, there was just so much missing. It was almost as if it were an excuse, not a real apology, because Some I have to say something. people equated it to a hostage video yes, there. Yes. So, John, what does he have to do tonight to get <laughs> back on track? That's funny. Uh, it was like a hostage video. Um, I, I don't think he will do the right thing. I mean, I think that he'll probably try to apologize. I think realistically, though, he's going to He's going to sound like maybe I sounded earlier in the show where he's going to talk about Bill Clinton a lot. And mm -hmm. so I think he's going to use Bill Clinton to try to justify himself. I don't think that that's accurate, and that's not what I was trying to say. Yeah. I think it, I was speaking more about the hypocrisy of partisan sure, supporters. Sure. But I think he's going to try to do that and say Hillary's just as bad because she aided and abetted Bill for decades. And it backfires And on I him. don't think it will yeah. backfire. And it will backfire All right. on him. All right. Well, we'll be <laughs> expecting a report from you uh, from on the, on the ground up there. The so anyhow, <laughs> Joyce Elliott, John Burris, thank you both very much. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for watching. That is all for today's edition of Talk Business and Politics. We will see you Monday when John Brummett joins me on our daily show for a recap of the presidential debate on Sunday night. Check it out at talkbusiness.net. Until then, take care. Thank you.